those on the back. I've got them somewhere here too, but I'm not gonna go digging them out. No, that's fine. And then there's a couple of petals. Um, Alrighty, let's go, Dad. What have we got here? Uh, finally getting around to building my cycle cart. I'm building a replica A model 1929 A model Speedster that uh, Fangio raced back in the early 30s and late 20s. Uh, he started his career in motor racing in a Ford, uh, even though he's renowned uh, Ferrari and uh, a European driver. So f what we've done is we've got all the components so far that we can um, and we've laid them all out here to give us an idea of what we have, what's going to go where and also to present uh, a starting point um, of where we're going to build. So we've got uh, com different components here. Um, the fuel tank on the original A model Ford uh, is behind the passenger, or behind the driver and the passenger. And the shape of it, um, we've, you know, I've incorporated to, into a, an old stainless steel tub, and I'm going to use that as an interpretation of the rear fuel tank, but also I'll use it to cover the engine so that it hides the engine away. It doesn't look uh, so obvious that there's an engine at the back instead of the front. All right, let's show them, show them what you mean. Okay, this is what I mean by the fuel tank. This is, this is the tub that I'm going to use as a fuel tank, as an interpretation of the original fuel tank. And it'll be cut and shaped and changed to what it is now. And then this will become the engine cover for our engine, obviously. And that'll sit behind the seat, uh, which uh, fits into the tea bucket style uh, of the original race car. So, yeah. The whole idea of anything in cycle car is to try and make something else work into what you're trying to interpret it into. There's no rules, there's no um, set plans of how you do things, it's you just uh, it comes down to personal interpretation of anything uh, pre-war. And that's what you're doing here? That's what we're doing here. Yeah, all right, cool. So what are we using as the body? Okay, well, so far what I've got here is, a, you can see it's a roll of, of uh, sheet metal and uh, that's actually the outer skin of the hot water system and I'll use that as the bonnet and the front part of the body um, to as, as we move forward uh, past the chassis build and all that sort of thing. Uh -huh. So that's what that big roll of sheet metal is, right. it, will, it will be the front body. Alright, what else have we got here? Uh, Anything else that's cool to point out? Well these a lot of the guys uh, run a solid rear axle and um, I'm being a little bit different here. I'm running a peerless differential, um, which means that I don't, I don't have a fixed rear axle. Um, it can be, there's, two, there's pluses and minuses to that, particularly when you're racing, but there's not a lot of racing goes on out here in Australia, so I'm not worried about that at all. And so you've got the engine, from the engine drives the variable speed clutch. The variable speed clutch drives a chain, drives a chain sprocket attached to the diff, and the diffs are obviously attached to the wheels, and that's how you move along. The wheels, uh, they're just uh, an aftermarket wheel that I, that I found online. Originally, most of the guys in the in the uh, states, use the Honda wheels, which is this style of wheel. They use these because they've found them to be fairly successful, or very successful, um, and but that's what they use. But they're really hard to find here, and ridiculously expensive. So I'm going with these wheels that I've. Found online, and we'll 
we'll just see how it goes. All right, and you got a, a front spring here? Yeah, the, the front suspension um, is usually two leaf springs. I'm doing a transverse front spring to sit into the original format of the A-model Ford. So that's why a single front spring with a front axle and the wheels attached on that. All right, so what have we got here about, you say about 90%? Uh, I'm, a, I'm about 90% of components. Some are still packed away. Yep. But um, yeah, I've got about 90%. So I'm, I'm at the stage now where I'm ready to start building the chassis. And um, because of my health issues, I've built, I used, I manufactured these stools and stands uh, here so that I can sit make it I've got to make some brackets up here so I can use this to sit the chassis up at this height so I can work on it properly without injuring myself cool that's what this is all about and we've got a couple of things here in the background that we can give give people a little bit of a tease about what's that in behind the covers over oh, there behind the covers over here is my 1929 Riley Speedster. You can, if I can get the cover off. <laughs> cool. Don't show them too much, but no. that's um. I've got a 1929 Riley Speedster. Um, I've currently a friend of mine is rebuilding the Magnetos. Um, because they're one of the failings of that particular model of car. And I've probably got the last two Magnetos in the, on the planet. Um, and he's fortunate that I, I'm fortunate that he is qualified and, and old enough to be able to fix these things because he, he's the last man on, in Australia that's going to be able to fix these, uh, cool. Cool. these particular items. So that's so, a 19 what? 29. 1929 Riley? Not Riley. So we'll have more videos about that coming as well yes, yes and then what have we got over over on the other side i've also got a, a 1927 oakland roadster and uh, it's uh, it's in original format uh, it's in an original condition um, it's quite a rare car in the fact that uh, it's a hundred percent original uh, all the timber framework is original um, yeah everything is just it's, it is truly a, a survivor of the past, a rare survivor. Cool, and we'll have videos about that coming yeah. back to life as well. Yeah, we'll have some. We'll do some footage on that as well. Okay, cool. Well, let's get back to the cycle cart. Yep. Yeah. All right, so we've had a look at what it, we've laid the bulk of the uh, the cycle cart outside. We've had a look at what you think it's going to look like. This is what you've been working on. What have we got here? Uh, this is the our origins of, of the interpretation of my cycle car. So I've got a cycle car that I'm working on duplicating and this is the particular cycle car that um, that I'm going to reproduce in into a, into a, this is a particular racing car that I'm going to introduce into a cycle car. And if you look at Certain, and I've done a drawing to help myself with obvious dimensions and everything associated with the cycle car. And if the if you look at this particular part here, this is normally where the original fuel tank is, and that's where that stainless steel tub is going to cover the engine. So that's that'll be the stainless steel tub, which will end up looking like. The original. Have you got um, a yeah. photo of the fuel? I do have a photo, a complete photo of the car here somewhere. Okay, that's so that 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 fuel tank there. Yep. Is going to be the uh, cover for my cycle car engine. Cool. So that that bit there. Yep. Is going to be going there. There. And that will be that stainless steel tub. Cool. 
and the roll of sheet metal will end up being the the bonnet and the front section of the bodywork, which is obviously this part here. Cool. And you you were showing me before you had um, an idea of how you were going to do this part on the I guess it's the visor yes, part of it. Yeah. The, I'm I'm not the best panel beater in the world, um, and I'm too old and fatigued these days to to go through the uh, effort of, of doing it uh, to the level that's required. Yep. So I've you I've come up with alternatives of how to get shapes. So I've got the windscreen front part of the of the cowl here that is shaped like that. So what I've worked out is that I can utilize uh, a wheelbarrow and if I utilize a wheelbarrow I can turn the wheelbarrow on its end and still uh, still obtain this shape that I'm that I require um, to get the interpretation of the dashboard yeah cool so this is like a this is going to be an example of the sort of ingenuity and personal touch yeah, that goes into yeah, a that's, cycle that's, that's right yeah um, and, th and that's 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 the the fun of it as well is trying to make something else uh, achieve something totally different to what it was designed for yeah um, and th that's all part of the fun of making these things using your creativity and imagination yeah. and not having to have tens of thousands of yeah gear and fabrication yeah. well, you, equipment you're on, you're on a budget too i mean the last thing you want is something like this to end up costing you twenty thousand yeah. dollars um you could quite easily do it but you you're working i mean i'm working on a budget of two thousand dollars yeah um to to build this thing and i can't see why it's going to cost me any more than that um and it's just a matter of utilizing other other products to achieve the same results cool. you know if i was to get that fuel tank engine cover made that would cost me probably about maybe a thousand bucks to get that made you can go to the so, hardware and spend 50 bucks on yeah, a wheelbarrow and... I, I buy I, I go down to the dump and i pick up a, an old tub and make it myself yeah, yeah. so it, it's just economics uh ingenuity yeah and and uh and vision as to what you what you, what you can do with something else so uh, as of making this video today how far away do you reckon we are from getting the cycle cart i would say um probably probably about three months three months from now yeah in real in real time yep. in my real time yep cool um because you still got life to life to <laughs> achieve and things to do so we've got this is the planning and preparation stage you've got 90 percent of the gear you've yep. got the vision we've got it laid out um so i guess the next video will probably be the first stages of getting it put together yeah the the first stage will be the chassis build okay um and then we'll go from there all right cool so the next video that we'll put up for the cycle cart will be the chassis build the chassis build all right cool all right well that i think that'll wrap it up for today um, anything you want to say to everyone before we sign off? No, stay tuned. Um, it's good fun. And if there's anyone else out there that wants to get involved in this thing, particularly in Australia, um, you know, don't be shy. Yeah. Um, jump in and, and do some inquiries online and, and have a look around because it's a great sport um, and it's a lot of fun. I, I went to America last year and, uh, and raced these things myself. Uh, so it's it's great fun and the people are fantastic. Cool. It's a it's a budget way of going racing, and it's good fun. Awesome. So if anyone um, from Australia who's thinking of building one or has built some and wants to get in touch, just leave us a comment on the video. And... Yeah, leave us a comment or go and look at Bonneville Garage. Yeah. Uh, online. Yeah, we'll leave we'll leave links to a couple of things yeah. down below. So. If you guys want to get in touch with Dad and discuss anything, you got any ideas or you want to run anything by him, um, we'll have Dad's email address down there as well. And I guess until the next time, we'll um, see everyone later. Okay.